In late 1922, only months after the experimental Yubari was started, Japan began construction of a new class that incorporated Yubari's innovative design techniques. These were the two ships of the 8100-ton Furutaka class. These ships were a direct response to the American Omaha class. As such, they were meant to be able to outrun and outgun them. As such, they were armed with a new 200mm 50 caliber gun and were designed to be able to reach 35 knots. Protection, though, only needed to be against 6-inch guns. Notably, though, started after it, the design of these ships predated the Washington Treaty, so aren't really treaty cruisers. That is to say, the weight restrictions of the treaty didn't really figure in their design. That came later. Instead, their weight was more about maximizing their speed and minimizing their cost. Academically, they started the new heavy cruiser practice of being named after mountains, a tradition that had been reserved for battle cruisers. The 200mm gun was a new size for Japan. As such, at first, only single enclosed mounts were doable rather than the twin turrets originally hoped for. As such, the second pair with twin turrets was suspended until twin turrets were available. These finally were completed as the follow-on AOBA class. I'm not going to go over this gun because by World War II it was mostly gone. These ships also introduced a new 24-inch torpedo, more powerful than the ones on the previous light cruisers. On top of arming the heavy cruisers, these torpedoes also armed the new series of destroyers that would come later. On the cruisers, by World War II, they had been replaced by the new oxygen-burning Type 93 Long Lance. Propulsion was still a combination, mostly the vastly superior oil burning, but coal was still retained in case oil supplies weren't available. Again, these ships did as much as possible to be as light as possible while still being as structurally strong as they could. The forward two funnels were trunked together. They abandoned the forecastle deck in favor of a long flush deck that curved upward at the bow. They incorporated the idea of using the hull as armor rather than hanging armor on the hull. Unfortunately, they still came out a thousand tons over their designed weight of 7,100 tons. This gave them a lower freeboard than expected and meant they couldn't reach their design speed of 35 and a half knots. Unappreciated at the time, it also meant they were top heavy and structurally weak. It was a mistake. Japanese ship designers would make over and over until the Tomozuru and Fourth Fleet incidents mentioned before forced them to correct it. In the mid-30s, they, along with the Aobas, were rebuilt to correct these problems and update them to a homogenous class. All four were assigned to the South Seas at the start of the war. This was meant to be rather soft duty, but once the Guadalcanal campaign started, they were very busy. Decidedly overaged, they suffered heavily, and only Aoba suffered the many battles in the slot. Furutaka was started December 5, 1922, and completed March 31, 1926. Kako was started November 17, 1922, and completed July 20, 1926. Main armament was six 200mm 50 caliber guns in six single enclosed mounts three forward with the second raised above the first and third. The other three were aft with mount four in front of the rear mast and the other two behind it. Secondary armament was four 76mm 40 caliber anti-aircraft guns in four single open mounts, one mount on each side of the two funnel pairs. Torpedo armament was 12 tubes in six pairs, three on each side built into the hull of the ship one pair beneath the barrel of turret 3, one pair beneath the catapult, one pair beneath the barrel of turret 4. These used the new Type 90 24-inch torpedo which entered service in 1923 for use on heavy cruisers and Fubuki destroyers. Weight was 2,630 kilograms and length was 8.5 meters. Propulsion was kerosene and air, not pure oxygen like the later Type 93 long lance. Warhead weight was 375 kilograms. Range was 7,000 meters at 46 knots, 10,000 meters at 42 knots, or 15,000 meters at 35 knots. Propulsion was provided by 12 boilers, two of which were coal-fired, venting to three funnels. 
the forward two of which were trunked together. These provided steam to the four turbines that generated 102,000 horsepower. Each turbine ran one of the four propellers for a top speed of 34 knots. They used one rudder. Protection was a 76 millimeter thick hull plate that protected the machinery spaces and sloped nine degrees outward from bottom to top. The armored deck topped off the side armor and was 35 millimeters, while the upper deck above it had 47 millimeters. The magazines had 50 millimeter sides. The gun houses had 25 millimeter fronts and 19 millimeter roofs. Aircraft complement was one float plane launched off the catapult mount above turret four between the funnel and the rear mast. Modifications were pretty serious. In 1932 and 1933, they traded their 76mm 40 caliber anti aircraft guns for four single open mount 120mm 45 caliber anti aircraft guns. Also, a new catapult was fitted for a maximum of two float planes. Between 1936 and 1939, they were modernized and brought up to the standard of the AOBAs, effectively making them one class. The single 200mm mounts were removed and replaced with three twin turrets for six 203mm 50 caliber guns, two turrets forward and one aft. The fixed hull-mounted torpedo tubes were removed and two quadruple torpedo mounts were added to the deck, one on either side of the catapult for the Type 93 long lance. To give them even more punch, these tubes could be reloaded from the superstructure in front of them. Below deck, the 12 boilers were replaced with 10 new oil-fired ones, and the four turbines were replaced with four new ones that generated 110,000 horsepower. This allowed the number 3 funnel to be replaced with a much smaller one. Armor on the new turrets was 25 millimeters and barbette armor was 57 millimeters. The conning tower received 36 millimeters of armor and the bridge was rebuilt. A more powerful catapult replaced the old one. To improve the TDS, increase stability, and recover lost buoyancy due to all the weight, larger bulges were fitted. All this work raised standard displacement to 8,700 tons and reduced speed to 33 knots. Both were sunk before any major wartime modifications could be made. Furutaka and Kako started the war by covering the invasion of Guam. In the later half of December 1941, they supported the second invasion of Wake. In late January 1942, they covered the invasion of Rubal. Then, in early May, the invasion of New Guinea. In early May, they also covered the first invasion of the Southern Solomons, including Guadalcanal, then the Port Moresby invasion force during the Battle of the Coral Sea. With the invasion of Port Moresby canceled as a result of the battle, they returned to Japan for refit, which kept them out of the Battle of Midway. Returning to Rubal in early July, they took part in the overnight Battle of Savo Island. The next day, August 10th, at 7.10 a.m., while sailing back north to Rubal past Simbari Island, Kako was hit on the starboard by three torpedoes from the U.S. sub S-44. Two hit aside the forward turret, flooding them and the bow. The third hit flooded her two forward boiler rooms. Taking on so much water so suddenly within five minutes, she rolled over to starboard and sank bow first. In mid-October, Furutaka took part in the Battle of Cape Esperance. During the battle, she was hit repeatedly. Early in the battle, she was hit by a torpedo that flooded her forward engine room, cutting her speed. At least one of the dozens of shells hits detonated her highly volatile, oxygen-burning Type 93 torpedoes, starting massive fires which of course illuminated her, which in turn caused her to be shot at more. Even worse, the blast cracked her stern, which in addition to the torpedo hit, led to progressive flooding aft. At about 2.30 a.m. on October 12th, she finally sank stern first. 